Hi guys, it's Jasmine with Keto in the Kitchen with Jasmine. Today what we're going to be doing is we're going to be foraging from trees for apricots and also in my friend and neighbor's garden for things that we need for the show. So I hope you guys enjoy this. Have a good one. Radish, though. That's exactly what it tastes like. Okay, guys, so I was working in the garden, in Jen's garden, and we were taking all the vegetables out that I want to use for the, today. The recipe that we're going to be using today is we're going to be making keto chili rellenos, with, which is basically um, poblano stuffed peppers with cheese, but we're going to make it a little bit different. And in addition to poblano stuffed peppers, we're also going to use a green pepper because I don't have enough of the poblano stuffed peppers. Um, in addition to that, we're going to add ground turkey to it. And um, in addition to that, we're going to make salad with goji berries because they're very good for diabetics. So I'm taking shots of, I took video of all of the vegetables in the garden, and I'm also going to show you how I do my preps and everything else. Okay, so there's some video of, um, basically I took a bag and I have all my herbs in the bag. And what I'm going to do with those is I'm going to string them up and I'm going to hang them up. I'll show you a video of that as well. I also have a very large, so a humongous zucchini that I'm going to slice up and put in a large storage bag, a one gallon bag, and I'm going to freeze it for future use. I can make all sorts of recipes with that, so I'm very excited about it. In addition, I took some video and showed you that I have bell pepper poblano peppers and other peppers floating in a cold water white vinegar and sea salt bath to get rid of all impurities now what I'm going to do is I'm going to rinse the bell peppers and the poblano peppers and the other peppers in cold water then I'm going to rub them down with olive oil turn on my broiler too high and I'm going to let them broil on each side for about maybe five to seven minutes until they're blackened or longer depending on how long it takes my oven. I did also want to mention that what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut slits in this before I do this and I'm going to scrape out the seeds. So here's my bell pepper. What I did is I basically just cut out the insides of it, the seeds. I scraped it out and I threw that away. Um, you could actually save the seeds if you want and grow bell peppers from that, but I chose not to do that because I already have seeds. So guys, what I wanted to show you is that I actually prepped some zucchini and some broccoli. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to either, I'm gonna freeze one of the bags of zucchini and the other bag of zucchini and the broccoli is going to go in the fridge for upcoming recipes. So like I said with the peppers, you just want them to be black on top, so a little bit charred. And what I'm going to do is I'm gonna show you a shot of that, then I'm gonna flip it over and I'm going to put it back under the broiler for about maybe seven, 10 minutes. Now I'm going to turn my burner onto medium high. I have a pot set up for it. And what I'm going to do is put in two tablespoons of olive oil and then a little bit of garlic, maybe about a tablespoon of garlic. And then I'm going to put in, I'm gonna dump in one pound of ground turkey. So from the top of the bell pepper, from both bell peppers and also the insides of the poblano pepper, I actually took it and I chopped it up and I'm adding it to the ground turkey. Okay, so I added the green pepper to the turkey in the pot, and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add one medium-sized chopped up red onion. The next thing I'm going to add is one teaspoon of ground cumin. Now we're going to add about a teaspoonful of fresh oregano. I'm not actually going to be using the flowers, so I'm going to cut those off, but I am going to use the leaves only and not the stems, and I'm going to add that to the ground turkey. 
Now we're going to add one quarter teaspoon of ground cinnamon to the turkey pot. Now what I've done is I've added half a bunch of cilantro. I'll show you what that looks like. And that included the stems and what I did is I ground that up in the food processor. The next ingredient we're going to add is one half teaspoon each of salt and pepper. And now I'm going to turn it down to medium low and I'm going to add one cup of vegetable broth. Now I'm going to add one teaspoon each of garlic and onion powder. So my chili rellenos are finished and what I did is I just peeled out the outer layer off of it. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to chop it up and I'm going to add it to my ground turkey mixture. Now what I'm going to do is make my cheese sauce and Dennis had brought me over some Parmigiano, some really good stuff. So I'm going to use this for the cheese sauce and I'm going to put it in the food processor. Of course, what I did was I added the Parmesan cheese to the same food processor that the cilantro was in because why not? The cilantro was already clean and there was only a little bit of remnants of the uh, cilantro left. So I just blended it up together and I'm going to add it to the cheese sauce so it should be pretty delish. I honestly never would have thought to add dried cranberries, but because finecooking.com did it and I like to try new gourmet foods, I figure why not? Let's see how it tastes. The next ingredient we're going to add to the cheese sauce is going to be one cup of sour cream. The next thing we're going to add is approximately two tablespoons of unsalted butter. Now I'm going to add about half a cup of vegetable broth. And I'm going to turn the burner on to medium low and I'll give it a stir. So what we're going to do now is I'm going to let my cheese sauce cook down and blend together. And while it's doing that, what I've done is I took a bunch or a whole head of organic romaine lettuce and I soaked it in a cold water vinegar and sea salt bath and I'm going to tear apart the pieces now and I'm going to put them into bite-sized pieces and I'm going to get rid of everything that I don't want to eat. Um, but I am sharing this meal with Jen because she was nice enough to let me harvest from our garden since I couldn't have one this year. Um, so that's what we're going to do is we're now going to make the goji berry salad. The cheese sauce is actually very liquidy, so I'm going to sprinkle one tablespoon of cornstarch in it. Now I'm going to add string cheese to it, and this is mozzarella. Then I'm going to add about one half teaspoon each of salt and pepper. So I finished tearing up my romaine lettuce and I added the goji berries to the salad and I'll show you what it looks like. Now I'm going to thinly slice one half of a red onion and then I'm going to also chop up some bell pepper to add it to my salad. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add mild paste salsa to the baking dishes, I have them separated. So I have two different baking dishes, one for me and um, one for Jen and her family. The cheese sauce is now finished, so I'm going to let it cool off before I add it to either baking dish. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to peel this English cucumber and I'm going to quarter it and add it to the salad. And this is what that looks like. Okay, so my cheese sauce actually cooled off. I added it to my baking dishes and now what I'm going to do is cover my baking dishes with tin foil and put it in the oven at 350 degrees for approximately 45 minutes. And of course before I do that I'm going to top them both with cheddar cheese. Shredded. Right. 
Now I'm going to add some ha a handful of dried cranberries to my salad, and I'm just using the Kroger brand. And some Palomata olives. Now I'm going to thinly slice two organic apples. And now what we're going to make is the Asian salad dressing. And what you're going to need for this is one quarter cup of olive oil to one quarter cup of apple cider vinegar. The next ingredient we're going to add is two tablespoons of sesame oil. And then two tablespoons of stevia. Now shake it up and then pour it on your salad. Now top your salad with a little bit of feta cheese. And then that's the end of our recipe. Thanks for being here, guys. Have a great day.